Hey loves, um, back with another <laughs> super edgy video. That's that's the only way I know how to do it. Uh, and I hope that it resonates and you appreciate that part about me. Um, I do about myself, so I suppose it doesn't matter. Ha, ah, pleasure. So I came back to San Diego and I hit the pleasure train hard. I have <laughs> gone on three dates with three different people and two play parties in five days. And yesterday, for the first time, I had sexual relations, went on two different dates with two people in one day, separately. Ha! Huh. Even saying that, oh, so edgy. <laughs> like they all know now. So I have been pleasure deprived for so many years. I mean, most of my lifetime. And I think that that is more common with a lot of us. That even if we're in juicy relationships or when we're in partnership or we're married, um, that we somehow like tell ourselves that there's a pleasure capacity that we only get so much and that if we take more than that, then that means we're selfish or um, greedy. Um, there's that language of being um, insatiable, like that appetite. And certainly as women, I would say that we are not encouraged to embrace it. And if we do, then it's, you know, whatever. We're a tiger, we're this, that, and the other, which is sexy and wonderful, but it comes with its own implications. So... It has been super beautiful for me to claim this pleasure, to say I can have it and do it in any way that I want, that if it's healthy for me, it's healthy for other people, that I'm in full consent, that it's a delicious exploration, that it's play, that I never have to do anything that my body doesn't want to do, that sex doesn't have to look a certain way and then I have to go the full deal, whatever that is, that if I can free myself from that, then pleasure is so vast so wide, so open, and that this has been a curious one for me. So let me just delve into it, this idea of pleasure and climax, so that orgasm is the waves of all of it, and climax maybe is this peak that we're all striving for or we think that we want, that maybe that defines good sex, that that's our release, that's our way of connecting to our partner, and all those things are true as we get a rush of oxytocin as, you know, we do get that release that our bodies do really want it and need it. And that's okay and welcome. And that pleasure can coexist and hopefully be a big part of that, that we can, that this weekend I discovered how sensitive the inside of my elbow is. Ooh, like just me touching it now. <laughs> I'm gonna get too excited, I, <laughs> no, there's no such thing as too excited. Um, let me be seen and witness in my pleasure. Ha, that it's as simple as that. And that there is a honest longing and desire for me to also climax, to climax with partners, to feel that connection, to have that be a part of our sexual encounter. And I often find that the other person does, but for me, that there's a different sense of safety, comfortability, and all these stories around my body's too complicated. They're not going to be able to figure it out. Maybe next time. Or I'm so good with my body and wanting there not to be pressure on it that I kind of just check out of that possibility happening. It's great not to strive for it, and I encourage that. When we talk about Tantra, we talk about not having an end goal. Like this isn't, we're just in pleasure to be in pleasure. Once we have that end goal of like, I'm striving for this thing, we actually kind of lose sight of the journey that we're enjoying or hopefully enjoying. If we're not enjoying it and we're just striving for this thing, then we miss the kind of the, miss the whole point of inviting in pleasure into our bodies. But in acknowledging and working with that this year, I've noticed how much I can swing to the other side of like really denying my desire to have that climax, to just say, Oh, it's not important. I'm not going to strive for it. It's really the ride. It's the pleasure. It's everything else. Okay, and I deserve that too. And that doesn't mean that it's going to happen with every partner or that I should be switching over to striving for it again. But, 
how beautiful to be met by a partner yesterday who spent the time on me and kept asking me, what is your body like? Show me. How can I do this better? How can I? And it wasn't that kind of careful um, fear of incompetence that we sometimes can face with lovers where they're handing over everything to us because you can tell there's a, a nervousness around doing it right. There's a difference. There was a curiosity. And I want to approach every lovemaking, interaction, pleasure, den scenario with that curiosity because it allowed my body to drop in and be curious about itself. What does it like? How does it want to be touched and moved and kissed? And where is it going to respond? So that I got that chance to let go and surrender into that pleasure. Ah, which was so needed, so needed. And so were the other experiences of meeting lovers and vulnerability and tenderness that didn't result in climax. And these play parties that where I discovered um, how amazing cornstarch feels on my skin and, uh, you know, that group massage, how delicious that can be and voyeurism and exhibitionism and all, you know, all that, all that is good too. That the both can coexist and that the both are super important. And that as women in particular, who may have, we do, we have different anatomy. Our, our orgasms may seem, our climaxes may seem a little more elusive, but they don't have to be. We find the right situations, the right people, the right sense, the more that we get in touch with our own bodies and our own experience and our own pleasure. Huh. So and that brings me back to that last bit, slut shaming. Ah, mm, mm, mm. I know that I did it with myself, <laughs> at least for a moment in time of being like, is this too much? What's happening? Am I in control? You know, even going to the, I knew I wasn't a sex addict. I know I'm not, but you know, thoughts that were bordering on that of, have I gone, you know, am I insatiable? Have I, no, it's awake. It's alive in me. Like it is in so many of us, but we repress it. And my desire is to have it be in all of us because this is power. This is power. My own personal power, getting into my creativity, my sexuality, my sensuality, how I want to run it, who I want to run it with, how I want to run it on my own, how I want it to look different every single time. And it leads me to creation. It leads me to boldness. It leads me to making a video like this, which feels utterly terrifying and courageous and so useful at the same time. Um, so, slut shaming isn't just about other people, it's about ourselves. Am I too much? And it's that essentially that same thing that I was referring to the last video, this story that so many of us run, I'm too much. And I particularly see it with strong, badass women who maybe have been told that or told they're bossy or bitchy or, you know, whatever. When really we're just claiming our space like anybody else. Maybe our space is a little bit wilder or bigger. <laughs> and so can our pleasure space then be too. So this is a call for all of us to just huh, invite in the pleasure, invite in the desire for climax, invite in the desire and the voracious energy around sexuality and creativity and wanting to do that with several people in whatever way that we do that we do it that honors us and them and consensual and safe and all those things. And we get rid of all those other barriers that would keep us from it. And then we just strip it down to whatever stories run in, you know, around being too much or taking too much time or, um, I wasn't raised this way or, you know, there's a lot of us, former Catholics, former Mormons, former, like whatever religion, um, in this Tantra community, in this scene. And it's not a coincidence. Can we face those stories, those patterns with love, confront them, subvert them, show no mercy to them, and still get our pleasure? Still get our pleasure. And today my pleasure was to lay and watch sex education on Netflix and drink afternoon wine and get back to all these people I love and communicate and write still pleasure. 
still pleasure. Okay. How are you going to get yours today? I hope it's good.